Right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? New balance changes are out. Now, of course, we've already done a video going over all of these changes that came out on December 7th in this lovely Blizzard community post, but there's been a lot that's changed since then. So a lot of people are really confused about what's going on. There's a lot of like misinformation, bad takes, and general confusion in the community. So luckily, there was a thread recently that said, hey, look, it tried to summarize all this. Uh, shout out to Jesu for doing this on Reddit. But I actually personally found this a little bit confusing, and a lot of the people seemed very confused in the comments. And people said, well, don't worry, check it out. In fact, Scarlett's in my chat, she's linked it up. She said, did you see this? Look, here's the patch notes. The problem with these patch notes, as good as they are, is if you haven't looked at the previous version, it's a bit confusing. So before we go through that, I want to go through and kind of say to you all, okay, if you haven't looked at the initial changes, go back and watch the initial video. I'll link it below. If you have, good, let's continue. The best way you can check the, the order of the changes is if you go in-game to StarCraft 2, and let's show you guys how I got to this menu. Let's show you. So if you go custom game, click a map, go create with mod, and then you want to search 5.0.11. This is going to come up. Once you search for that, it's by uploader, and you're going to see January 2nd there. Now, rather than clicking create lobby, go mod info. Check it out patch notes and you can actually see the last five updates to the extension balance mod now version one is actually missing the first change 1.0 um where basically what they did was they only changed it so that the hydra move speed buff only works on uh off creep not on creep because uh, people rightly point that out pointed out okay hydras are already pretty damn good defensively on creep it's the the fall off is off creep you give them a bit of a move speed buff off creep we're okay with that on creep seems way too crazy like we don't want to boost zerg's on creep power because they don't really have an issue there it's their off creep power that could be you know slightly buffed so really good change there after that december 10th we've got version 1.1 and i'm going to analyze all this a little bit after but let's just go through the changes as we as we do and, and talk about things when we get to them a variety of upgrade issues were fixed there was a uh, one of the alternate ghost skins didn't have the option to cancel snipe which they've added in which is obviously very important since it can get cancelled otherwise uh and some other weird bug issues real small bug fixes in 1.1 1.2 important balance change from the initial change the ultralisk range slot so that is the range at which it would be able to land a hit even if the unit ran away was increased from 1 to 1.4 now they're lowering it in 1.2 to, so it's 1 to 1.25. Because remember, the Ultralisk is already smaller, so it's already getting in on top of the enemy much better. So people were saying, hey, look, you already got smaller Ultras that get on top of the enemy way too easily. Adding the range slop as well is like pretty extreme. So they basically softened that a little bit. I still feel like it might be worth lowering it. I haven't tested it enough to know, but going back to one, because that did really reward... Uh, very good Stalker and Marauder Micro. Essentially, when Stalkers are like stutter stepping and blinking back and Marauders are like kiting really well, it was rewarding. And people would say, well, but then the Ultras can never land hits and it feels really bad as the Zerg. And I would say, yes, but melee units have insane statistics in StarCraft to make up for that fact. They are very good. They have great damage, great hit points. And the thing is, if you land a surround and they can't escape, they're screwed. If you land a fungal, they're screwed, right? Blinding Cloud can really mess them up. So I'm still erring on the side of maybe we just keep the smaller size model and go back to one and it's already going to be enough of a buff. That's just my thoughts for now. Very preemptive. I haven't done enough testing or seen enough games on it. Now, Gravitic Booster's move speed bonus got increased. So basically that's the observer move speed is meant to give plus 50% move speed, whereas it didn't. It was just giving a flat bonus before. So they've upped that. It's a very small change. Nothing too important there. Also, there was a bug. Apparently, this one's really funny. So they fixed an issue. If you used mass recall and strategic recall, it could move the recalled units to an incorrect location. I don't know if anyone has a clip of this happening. If you do, please share it with me. I really want to see what happens. So for those who don't know the difference there, one of those is the global nexus recall ability. The other one is the mothership's recall ability. You have two recalls as Protoss once you get the mothership out. Apparently, if you recall with one, recall with the other, it would just like teleport them to some corner of the map or something like that. I thought that's bloody hilarious. Oh, Scarlet took this up. Scarlet took this up. Okay, so he's gonna, so he's he's recalling the carrier. I hope this music's copyright free. And it recalled to a sh shield battery. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so so he's just double recalled it, right? So he, he's selecting the mothership. 
He's going to recall, and then he's going to, before it finishes recalling, he's going to recall with the Nexus as well. So yeah, recall, recall, and it's off to the side. Where's the mothership I want? I think the mothership's up there. So it's kind of like halfway between the two of them and off to the side, I think. <laughs> That's not really important, but funny nonetheless. Okay, so actually important changes. This sentry move speed was increased from 3.15 to 3.5. Um, now, I believe that allows the sentry to keep up with stalkers a little bit better. I still think it's slower than stalkers. I'm not quite sure. 4.13 actually. So it's still a lot slower than a stalker, but it just won't be lagging behind as much with your stalkers. What about Colossus? Oh, the Colossus is still 3.15. So it would be faster than Colossus, but more able to keep up with stalkers. Whereas, okay, so previously it was Colossus and Immortal and Sentry was all 3.15. I imagine the answer for that is just to allow it to keep up. Um, Scarlet's pointing out that 3.5 is actually the adept move speed. So it does allow sentries to keep up with adepts easier. Ah. So you guys know those rare like adept sentry disruptor pushers you might end up doing in like a, a real messy ZVP? Interesting buff. I'm not really sure on the, the reasoning behind it, but cool idea. Now, here's a big one. Cyclone lock-on now prioritizes air units. Who can attack the cyclone? So basically it's just an attack priority thing. What used to happen and the big problem battle mech players have versus Zerg is you can have like 10 cyclones and the Zerg has 10 muters. And, and and you have Hellions to counter the Zerglings and you still just get absolutely wiped. Uh, maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe there's like 14 muters. But either way, basically what would happen is the Zerg would just jump on your army with the Lings and the muters. Knowing that the Lings are sacrificial lambs, they're going to get roasted by the Hellions, but not before the Cyclones lock onto them. And then Cyclones have a four second cooldown before they can lock on anything. One, two, three. Oh, all the Cyclones are already dead. The muters are on top just killing them, right? So it was this huge problem where you needed to try to run backwards whenever muters were around, manually lock on to each mutalisk individually, especially in a big fight, very difficult. Or you had to basically just let your Hellions kill off all the Zerglings and then you could aim move the Cyclones. It made it really hard to ever engage and the Zerg could basically scare you off and then run backwards and your army was always in a panic running away with Battle Mac first Zerg. So it's really important for those scenarios. I think this is a really good change um because there was a bit of an unfair dichotomy there where if they went muters you kind of had to start building widow mines and thors and it really messed with the mobility of the battle mech style and i still think the zerg will be able to ambush and jump on top pretty quickly it still takes a lot of ticks to actually kill a mutalisk but it's just a little bit more fierce and cyclones build so slowly and you, you could spend so much time and money building eight cyclones zerg just builds 12 muters and all the cyclones are gone I really like that change. I'm so, sure some people would disagree and say it's unfair, but I think it's great. All right, so we've got version 1.3. Balance reverted the duration of broodlings created by building. So the, the broodling has about half as much duration from the broodlord, but they realized, wait a second, the broodlings popping out of buildings have also been nerfed. We never intended to do that. Let's just make sure we have two different types of broodlings now. <laughs> You've got broodlings that come from a broodlord, don't last as long building broodlings exactly the same as they've always been fair enough now shield battery restores tooltip now uses blizzard time shows its range indicator on butter button hover hover and in target mode okay so it just shows that dotted line so you can see where the edge of the range is for your battery overcharge ability good stuff uh it also fixed shield batteries autocast targeting dark shrine i had no idea this was a thing apparently it thought the dark shrine was like a photon cannon a defensive structure so it was automatically healing it instead of healing fighting units nearby which is not what you want Fix an issue where changelings would permanently switch sides after neural parasite. Yet another thing. I, I, if anyone has clips for any of these, I'd love to see them. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't see any of these, but that's hilarious. Uh, fix burrow swarmers and ravages colliding with burrowed movers. Roaches changed their collision after research and tunnels. Now I wonder, does that mean you can move straight through swarm hosts and ravages with burrowed roaches, or, or was it just they were like? massive when burrowed and taking up way too much space. I'm not quite sure. Balance level one upgrade research time reduced by 7.1 seconds. Apparently the upgrade change didn't go through correctly before. So this was just implementing the initial balance change that was meant to have gone through. The patch notes are not that clear, says Scar. It's cool. And patch notes are never clear. There are small indie companies that make $500 million games and their patch notes are bloody indecipherable. So uh, I think the, the crew that are putting these together are doing a pretty damn good job. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, yeah, so basically just implementing the Forge upgrade buff uh, as it should be. Uh, I've heard a really bad take, guys, that this isn't a buff because all it's doing is reverting a previous nerf. It's still a very significant change. Ends up being about a total of 30 seconds off your 
you know, total upgrade duration by the time you get to plus three. Is it that big? No, but it's actually doing a pretty good job. Version 1.6, so we've skipped 1.4 and 1.5. We've gone straight to 1.6. Creep tumor respread, respread cooldown further increase. Okay, so basically they've nerfed the creep tumor respread a little bit more saying, all right, people aren't happy that the creep tumor nerf. It's so minor. Even though it does make a difference, it's very minor, right? It, it only really impacts a game where the, the Zerg has no pressure on them at all um, and is able to spread creep freely. We'll nerf it just a little bit more. Broodlord's speed increase, they've also reduced by a tiny amount. To be fair, 2.3 to 2.24. I think this might have... Is that because Broodlords could escape Snipe, potentially? And they just needed to slow it down ever so slightly to make sure it couldn't escape Snipe? I, I assume that's the only reason it would be such a minor change because <laughs> I can't imagine they're like, oh, the Broodlord's too fast now. Um, we need to remove 0 0.06 moves. But that's... None of you would notice was 0 0.06 moves, but it is such a minor amount. It's actually crazy. Now, this is obviously January 2nd, by the way, this one. So this is getting very recent. Uh, Viking fighter mode damage point reduced from 0 0.12 to 0 0.04. So this is really cool, guys. They've made the Viking have a lower damage point. Remember, damage point is what was also changed for the Hydralisk as well. And what that does is it makes the unit more microable, right? So if you go up to the Hydralisk, remember, they also reduce the damage point a whole bunch as well. And what that does is it means it just gets its first shot off. So a Marine or a Mutalisk are two examples of units with very low damage point, where if you watch a Marine, bang, move, bang, move. Very smooth, easy to start a step, right? Think of a Mutalisk. Shoot, it's already moving. Shoot, move, shoot, move. Oracles, I think Oracles have incredibly low damage point as well. So that's that's very, very important for allowing Hydras to be more microable, but this will also allow the Viking to be a little bit better at just moving and shooting. So the new Viking damage point is the same as a Marine. So that means when you're trying to pick off a carrier and run away, kite a Void Ray, kite a Battle Cruiser, it's gonna be a little bit smoother, a bit easier to shoot Corruptors back away, shoot Broodlords back away. Just, it, it's not, this is not something, if you're a bronze player, this really affects your gameplay. But for high level players, it does make the unit more microable. And remember, there are some hugely overlooked changes already for low level players, like the, the interceptor attack priority, which has completely gone under the radar. And I just I just want to iterate that, by the way, quickly. Can we can we just can we just remind everybody of this change, which nobody's talking about, which is so good for quality of life for people who struggle in lower leagues versus carriers? If you A move Vikings or Corruptors near a carrier or anything in range of the carrier, they're gonna shoot the carrier instead of of the interceptors. Can you guys believe that? It's just kind of going to be cool in fights like this, right? Where you're just My like, charge. the carriers are just going to do their job automatically, the corruptors. That is such a nice change. And I think it's kind of gone under the radar a little bit, just how nice that change is. Like as the Zerg, you're like spreading burst storms and disruptors and using your spellcasters. Having your corruptors just do their job, especially for low level players, this is such a game changer. This is such a change that honestly, is going under the radar. I see no one talking about it. And the masses are, are fucking just like, oh yeah. And I'm like, what do you, you guys don't realize you'll actually be able to win games with Corruptors versus Carriers. I've seen players up to Diamond try to focus Fire versus Carriers with their Vikings and their Corruptors. They focus on one and then they misclick and their units are just fighting Interceptors for the rest of the battle. Like, <laughs> very consistently. Because there's a lot going on this storm and this splash damage. It's it's stressful. So yeah, it's actually really cool. I, I really like I really like that change. Just one of those things. I just wanted to look at how this changed things. Because I, I think it's so good for the low-level players, but it also helps a bit in big fights. Like I would say if you have like 40 corruptors plus, it's gonna make more of a difference. I did 30 corruptors versus 15 carriers, right? But if you have like 40 corruptors, that's where it's gonna be like ridiculous I, we should do that as well i should just be able to a move the corruptors i'll just move them close enough to make sure they're in range and i'm just gonna a move them because they've almost got enough to kill two carriers on the first volley so yeah you can see this is way better 30 car corruptors wasn't that effective i think 40 seems to do a little bit better you can move them forward and these aren't realistic scenarios we're just looking at just trying to get get a feel for a change you see here, obviously I should start focus firing by now, right? Um, a smart attack? 
So they're not smart attacking, it's literally just interceptor attack priority has changed to one lower than the carriers. So that's actually just huge. This is this is a real game changer, especially if there's just a few carriers in a Thanks fight the and spots. you've got to focus on spreading storms, spreading disruptors, that sort of stuff. This completely changes the whole dynamics. This is actually a massive change. Not enough people are talking about. It's great. Um, people are saying, how far out is the attack range? So basically, uh, targets will acquire units that are an extra half a range away for that. So half a range beyond their range. So you still want to move your Corruptors or Vikings in a little bit. So if you just A move, obviously they will attack Interceptors at the edge of their range. You still need to move in a little bit with your Corruptors but then you, or your Vikings, but then you can attack move them. So units like Corruptors, Marines, Hydras, Vikings, they'll only move forward a little bit to actually get in range of the carrier if it's just out of range. Otherwise, they'll fight the interceptors. All right, guys, let's finish this version 1.6. So we've got Viking fighter mode damage point reduced, then balance liberator. Now, this is huge. Liberator health reduced from 180 to 150. Bit of a nerf. Build time reduced from 42.9 to 32.1. Big buff. Supply reduced from 3 to 2. Huge buff. Damage defender mode, that's the siege mode, reduced from 75 to 50. Huge nerf. So a real rework of the Liberator there, which makes it way faster to build, way less supply, a little bit more fragile, and a bunch of stuff like that. But it, it, it still one-shots workers and Lings and Bane, so it's better versus workers, it's better versus Ling Bane, but way worse versus like Stalkers, which it now takes four shots to kill, uh, Queens it takes four shots to kill instead of three. It's like, it's kind of like a really weird rework where it's hard to foresee all of the uh changes other than the fact that liberator is going to be just as good at harassing workers um but way more accessible to get to do that it's a bit interesting all right guys the most recent version later that same day january 2nd liberator rework removed okay guys so the the liberator flip-flop is what we experienced here we experienced a very ambitious set of changes to the liberator followed by a yeah nah and instead, they've just reduced the cost by 25 gas. So basically, pros were saying the Liberator is too expensive. You don't see it much in pro play. Tanks are just better and so on and so forth. So they're going to knock 25 gas. The thing is, I always thought Liberators were kind of great versus Protoss. But I do admit that at pro play, you don't see them that much. 25 gas is not the craziest buff. Uh, they were a very expensive unit. Um, some people might get mad over it. It's so minor, 25 gas. I don't think there's going to be that big of a stink kicked up. Uh, I'm sure, like I said, there's always going to be people who see anything that's buffed because there's a lot of people who are very uh, oppositional where just anything that's good for a race that they struggle against for them is the worst thing in the world and it just hurts them and their 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 brain is is just exploding and they're like, go, go F yourself. Why? Who? Who did this? Um, take a deep breath. And I want to remind you, if you're watching this video, I read a lot of the comments and not just me, the other people who are giving feedback to the people who are making the changes and putting their input in. If people make good arguments, we actually read them and go, oh, that makes sense. Good point. Didn't think of that. And we we actually share it. So what, what, what I think the community needs to realize in StarCraft is this is a community run balance now. And you are part of the community and your voices are heard, but they're heard a little louder when you aren't frothing at the mouth, but when you're making good arguments. So please, if you if you make good arguments, I've already shared a lot of things from Reddit and Twitch chats and just things people have pointed out on social media, being like, mm, have people considered that this change, this unit actually is way worse in this niche situation? I was like, oh, I didn't think of that. So there's a lot of room for considering things that we haven't all considered. So if you can come up with some reason why 25 gas is going to break the game, I'm sure that'll get reverted as well. But my inclination here is there's too much worry about, oh no, it's not going to be good. Oh, we're going to change too much. We're going to break the game. And I think we've got to get away from that worry and, and really be willing to break a couple of eggs to keep things fresh um, as much as possible. Uh, Raven, interference matrix change removed. Oh, so check this out, guys. Big reversion on the Raven change. And this is the biggest thing, the starting energy change. So no longer back to 50 energy, back to 11 second interference matrix. Auto turret energy cost change removed. So it's back to 50 energy turret. But the auto turret is massively nerfed, guys. Down from 10 second duration to 7.86. Auto turret health reduced from 150 to 100. Armor reduced from one to zero. No longer affected by near steel armor. Now this is huge. A lot of people have read this. I was looking at Reddit. People were like, wow, you're nerfing the Raven as well? The only good thing we got in this patch. This is disgusting. It's the Zerg Balance Council. This is the meme going around. It's the Zerg Balance Council. They're doing everything for Zerg because the Hydra and Ultra, Ultra buffs were more noticeable. This is so unfair. There's a few things people are forgetting when they read these changes. Guys, 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 guys. The Raven still has had its build time reduced from 43 to 30 seconds. 
which is a ridiculous buff. A 13 second build time, that's big. And it only costs 150 gas. There are still two massive buffs which are part of this. You've got to take these changes in the most recent one. You've got to piece these together. I know it's not as accessible if you haven't been following the changes with these two changes here. Okay, and that's what's so big about it. So the Raven is still 50 gas cheaper, builds 13 seconds faster, and it can still drop an auto turret for 50 energy. And I'll tell you what, I misinterpreted that. I didn't realize. I thought, I didn't read the full change. I played some games with Jason yesterday after these games came out. Holy crap, those turrets are BS. Don't get me wrong, they die a lot faster. So it's a change in the dynamic where you can kill the turrets a lot quicker now. Uh, two stalkers can three shot, right? A miss a, a, an auto turret, which is way better. Lings can take him down pretty quickly. But your ravens come out so early and can be spamming auto turrets. And when it comes to, if it's dropping a turret in an undefended mineral line, it's almost the exact same unit. It just has two seconds less duration, but it's still going to kill a bunch of workers, force you to run workers away, pull them back. So it's actually, and, and the raven comes out earlier by 13 seconds and is less 50 gas. So auto turret harass on worker lines is actually way stronger. Uh, you get more auto turrets faster, but they are not quite as tanky and they don't last quite as long. So the raven is still going to be more accessible uh, detection. But the auto turret, people were complaining that, look, auto turret's just too expensive at 75 energy. Uh, interference matrix is too nerfed as well. Like, you know, it's actually huge having an extra three seconds off the interference matrix. Anti-armor missile will remain nerfed at three down to two armor. And that is important. Now, if you go into the custom mod and you hover over, the tooltip still says it's minus three but it is still minus two actually, guys. So I remember going in and thinking, oh, they didn't they didn't list this in the changes. They reverted the anti-armor change, but the tooltip just isn't up to date. That's all. And a big one here as well, guys, um, the carrier. A lot of Protoss players were complaining that they were getting too many nerfs. And so as a result, they're just leaving the attack priority for the carrier. The interceptor changes to the shield and flying radius removed. So they're leaving the attack priority change that I just talked about before, but the interceptor changes to shield and flying radius removed. So they made it so the interceptors flew a bit further around the target, removed it. The interceptors also had 10 less shields, removed that. So the interceptors are back to exactly how they were. The only difference is it's a bit easier to micro things like corruptors and vikings to kill the carriers. That's all that's changed with the carrier. And obviously this is something where you've got to understand the balance council or whatever name we want to call it, that the people who are making these changes are very cautious and for good reason. They're very cautious because they don't want to break the game when, who knows how, you know, it's not something where we're going to get a new patch like every month. We, we'd like to patch the game as much as possible, but of course there's a bit of a slow uh, work from what I can see with getting things through. I, I think Blizzard's happy to put through a lot of changes that the community wants, but the pace at which they're going to be implemented is something which I, I don't think there's too much clarity around for me or anyone else out there. So obviously they want to be a bit cautious with reverting a few of these changes. So that's where we currently stand.